Hopper Short Sword, the very first weapon that is made available to newly created characters and is considered to be the weakest weapon in Terraria. But what if this weapon was able to grow and become stronger as you progress through the game? Well, in this video, I'm only allowed to use the Copper Short Sword, however, I installed a mod that allows this weapon to gain experience with every hit. With each level, increases the damage, critical strike chance, size, and attack speed. Just how strong will this weapon become, and will it be enough to take down the final boss Moonlord? Stay tuned to find out. Alright, so unlike the other videos where I had to find or gather materials to make a weapon to begin killing monsters, I can start doing that right away. Since this is going to be the one and only weapon throughout the entire playthrough, all I really need to search for are accessories, specifically those that can improve the Copper Short Sword, so the Feral Claws as an example. I'm also going to try and attack as many monsters as possible because I want to get this weapon strong enough to take down Moonlord, but for now, let's chop down some trees for wood. Okay, that should be enough wood for now. I've got 201. Let's go to the jungle to try to find some accessories. Oh, and to check out how much experience I gain from attacking monsters, let's just smack this green slime. So starting at zero, of course. Three, two, one. So one hit equals to five points of experience. I also do have the heavy modifier on the weapon, which is something that I don't really want. But once I find the Goblin Tinkerer, I'm for sure going to reforge it. Well, here's the jungle. Let's see if I can find those Feral Claws. I found Climbing Claws. Oh! Wait, that's three Life Crystals here. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, I've got 160 health now. Oh my god, perfect. And it has Intraped. So I gained 3% more melee speed. So in total, that's 15% more. I think what I'm going to do is get enough life crystals for max health, as well as mine enough ores for some armor before I return back onto the surface. Okay, here's another life crystal and gold chest. Ooh, okay, I'll take that. Shoe spikes and the suspicious looking eye. Okay, let's check out the copper short sword now. I'm pretty sure it's at level 1. Oh yeah, it is. So, it gained 2 damage, because it was at 5 melee damage before, and it also gained 1% critical strike chance. Oh my god. Armored Hermes boots. I will gladly take that. Ooh, and a sharpening station. That's going to let me deal some extra damage. I'm at 300 health now, just need 5 more until max health. Oh, cloud in a bottle. I pretty much just got all of the accessories that I was looking for. So let's now focus on getting the rest of my life crystals. And here are some rubies, so I will be summoning the King Slime, since that boss is a really good source of experience. Ooh, gravitation potions. Definitely gonna use this to find some more accessories up on Sky Islands. And this should be enough emeralds to make a emerald hook. There we go, got 15. And just one more life crystal. For max health. There it is. Let's just grab one more though, so I can make a heart lantern for that extra life regeneration. Okay, I think that's it. So let's head back home and clear out my inventory because it is completely full. There we go, inventory is all cleaned out. First things first, let's make the emerald hook. And then some platinum armor. I'm pretty sure that's more than enough for the full set. Oh yeah. Perfect. 23 defense. And with the remaining platinum bars, let's make the platinum pickaxe. And then with the rest, let's just make three platinum crowns. So that I can summon the king slime later. My copper short sword is at level 3, which isn't the level I exactly want before fighting my first boss. So I am going to level it up to at least level 5. But before that, let's drink a Gravitation Potions to find some Sky Islands for some more accessories. Okay, we've got the Shiny Red Balloon and the Lucky Horseshoe. Okay, just a few more stabs should do it. 
there we go. It's now at level 5 with 17 melee damage and 9% critical strike chance. The first boss that I'll be taking on will be the King Slime. Let's start this thing up. 3, 2, 1. Now, I'm a bit worried about this fight because I have to get really close up to the King Slime to be able to deal damage. So I'm definitely going to get hit a bunch of times. Yeah, I have to be really careful here. Oh my god, run, run, run. No! Okay, that was a big mistake by me. Heal up. Okay, about 600 health left. I have to be really careful here, because two hits from the King Slime will definitely kill me. Come on, almost done here. And you're finished! Oh, okay, perfect. That was a bit of a struggle, I won't lie. Now, did that boss fight level up my copper short sword at all? No, it didn't. 60% is pretty decent, though. And will there be the slime saddle? Yes, there is. I have one more slime crown, so might as well fight the king slime one more time. I also just realized, at level 5, the copper short sword is noticeably bigger. I'm very excited to see how big this thing is going to get at the very end of the game. One more hit, come on. Okay, all done. And that should bring my copper short sword to level 6. Yep, with 20 melee damage and 10% critical strike chance. The next boss that I'll be taking on is the Eater of Worlds. And this boss is going to give an insane amount of experience because of how much health it has. But before that, I'm going to build some NPC houses specifically to get the merchant to spawn in so that I can store away my gold safely. There we go. Five should be enough for now. Let's head over to the corruption. All right, let's do this thing. Coming from above. Oh my god. Okay, so we're gonna resurface. Dodge that. Oh my god, that tricked me. Okay, I'm very worried. I'm gonna be splitting this boss up a bunch of times. Oh my god, I need to dodge more. Let me eat my burger. There we go. Heal up from the hearts. Come on, come on. 50% health more. Oh, I got this. I got this in the bag. And you're finished. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now, there are a bunch of shadow orbs, so I can fight the Eater of Worlds multiple times. But before that, I'm going to see if I have enough materials to make the full shadow armor. Shadow helmet, scale mail. Oh, perfect. And the greaves. Oh my god, look how fast I am. Alright, here we go again. Oh my god, wait, I'm so much stronger now, what? Oh, it must be the critical strike chance. Because this armor does give a bunch of that. An additional 15% more. Wow, that was so much faster. Wait, I forgot to check the level when I killed the Eater of Worlds the first time. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Let's go check it right now. Oh! Ooh! Level 9! With 29 melee damage and a huge 32% critical strike chance. Let's fight this boss one last time. There we go! And my copper short sword should be at level 10. Yes, it is. Let's craft the nightmare pickaxe and begin mining down towards hell. All right, finally made it to hell. Let's see if I can find an obsidian skin potion so that I can mine the hellstone a lot easier. Oh, there we go. I got one. Okay, that should be enough hellstone. 346. And let's quickly kill this voodoo demon because I do want that guide voodoo doll. 
then let's mine some obsidian. And now I can make the full molten armor set. So from 30 melee damage all the way to 35. I do lose out on 8% critical strike chance though. But I definitely prefer a higher base damage weapon. And lastly, let's craft the Molten Pickaxe so that I can mine the hard mode ores later. Before I take on Skeletron, I still have yet to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. So let's do that right now. Okay, second phase. Seventy crit damage is pretty good. Almost done here. All finished. I have the shield of Cthulhu now, and that's going to help make the Skeletron fight a lot easier. Okay, the arena is all complete. Let's talk to the old man to summon the boss. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, this is going to be quite difficult because the hands are always moving. Okay, this hand's almost done. That's one. And that's two. Okay, just the easy part now. And whenever it does its spinning attack, that's when I can get the most damage in. Here we go. Oh yeah. Almost done. Come on. A few more hits. All finished. Now that I have access into the dungeon, there's just only one accessory that I'll be looking for. And most of you guys can guess already, that is the Cobalt Shield. There it is. Now before I take on the Wall of Flesh, I'm going to defeat the Goblin Army so that I can get the Goblin Tinkerer to spawn. Once I find him, then I can purchase the Workshop to combine all of my accessories together. Okay, that should be enough Tattered Cloths. Got 11 of them. Let's make the Goblin Battle Standard and summon the army. Goblin Army has been defeated. Let's go search for the Tinkerer. Oh, there he is! Okay, let's buy the Rocket Boots and the Workshop. I'm also going to reforge this Copper Short Sword into Legendary. Oh my, the first one, what? Okay, I'll take that. It now has 42 melee damage. Oh, it's so much faster now too. Let's first make the Blue Horseshoe Balloon. Then Spectre Boots. And finally... The Obsidian Shield. I think I should be set to take on the Wall of Flesh now. I'm really hoping a level 12 Copper Short Sword is enough to take down the Wall of Flesh. If not, then it looks like I'm gonna have to level this thing up some more. Alright, let's do this thing. 3, 2, 1. Oh my god, I took so much damage already. Okay, so far so good. Jesus! Okay, run back. Run, 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 run. Let's wait for my health to regen a bit more. Come on, almost done. Final stand. Oh my god! Come on! No! Oh! Oh, that was so scary. Oh my god. I am so glad that's over. Now, I'm really hoping for the warrior's emblem in this treasure bag. Okay. I got the summoner's emblem, but I'm pretty sure right here is where the shimmer pool is. So, I might be able to transform the summoner's emblem into the warrior's emblem. Yep, I was right. 
the Shimmer Pool is right here. Let's toss in the Summoner's Emblem. There we go. 15% more increased melee damage. So it's at 52 melee damage, and after equipping it, it's now at 58. Now with the Pwn Hammer, let's go back to the Corruption and break some Demon Altars to spawn in the Hard Mode Ores. Okay, so we've got Palladium, Orichalcum, and Titanium. Okay, that should be enough Palladium. Onto the Orichalcum. That's enough Orichalcum. And lastly, the Titanium. Okay, and I believe that should be enough Titanium. Now let's craft the full Titanium Armor set. So, from 54 defense, all the way to 75. But even with the Titanium Armor on, there is still no difference made to the Copper Short Sword. Let's go up to a Sky Island now to farm enough materials for a pair of wings. Okay, that's enough Souls of Flight. And that's enough Souls of Night. Let's go craft the Demon Wings. Alrighty, I should be good to take on the mechanical bosses now. But while I wait for Night to arrive, I'm going to go level up the Copper Short Sword as much as possible. It's finally nighttime, and I was able to get my weapon to level 20. So it now has 73 melee damage, 48% critical strike chance, and it looks like this. Oh yeah! So since this weapon did super well against the Eater of Worlds, I will be taking on the Destroyer first, since they're both very similar bosses. So without further ado, let's begin. Three, two, one. Run, run, run. Oh my. Wait. How much damage did I just do? Wait, what? It has less than 50% health. Oh my god. I was not expecting that. Okay, 10,000 more health. And there we go. The destroyer has been defeated. Surely that gave me a crazy amount of experience. Oh my god. Almost two full levels. Okay, since I defeated that boss very fast, I do have time to summon the next one. So we're going to take on the twins next. And yep, of course, the short sword is not able to reach it until it does this attack, where it dashes. So this boss is going to take a very long time to defeat. I am very tanky, so I can afford to just sit still and do this. Almost second phase for the Spasmatasm. Okay, there we go. Second phase. Let's back out a little bit. Don't want to get hurt by that cursed flame breath. Okay, there we go. Spasmatasm is down. Second phase for the Retinazer now. Almost done here. Come on. There we go. All that's left to take down is Skeletron Prime. But seeing that it's almost the next day, I am going to wait until the next night to fight it. It's finally the next night. So let's wrap this thing up. Oh, God. That was kind of bad. I do want to kill all the arms first for as much experience as possible. But it's going to be very risky. Okay, cannon is down. Lasers down. 
Vice is down. One more to go. And the Zaw is down. Just ahead now. All right. All of the mechanical bosses have been defeated. Now with all three souls, let's make the pickaxe axe as well as the full hollowed armor. There we go. Now I'm going to go to the jungle to mine at some chlorophyte and farm some more turtle shells to make the full turtle armor, as well as look for the plantera bulb. And if possible, I do want to try to find a mimic so that it can drop the titan glove. And with that, I can make the mechanical glove and potentially the fire gauntlets. Oh right, and the level on the copper short sword after defeating those three mechanical bosses. It is now at level 24. It almost has 100 melee damage. And the size is up to this. Ooh, there's the Titan Glove. Okay, so let's combine the Feral Claws with the Titan Glove to make the Power Glove. Then the Warrior's Emblem with the souls from the Mechanical Bosses into the Avenger Emblem. And with these two, into the Mechanical Glove. This is such a good accessory since it improves pretty much all the stats of melee weapons except Critical Strike Chance. But to fully upgrade this, I'm going to go down to Hell and try to get my hands on the Magma Stone. Oh, and there's the Magma Stone. And now... I can make the Fire Gauntlet. Ooh, here we go. Oh yeah. Now I'm able to set enemies on fire. Oh, there's the Plantera Bulb. So it looks like I'll be making the arena right here. Alright, the arena is now all complete. So let's break the Bulb to summon Plantera. 3, 2, 1. So the easiest way to fight her during her first phase is to just circle around her. But with the short sword, I have to get really close up to her. So it's a bit harder to dodge the petals. Okay, almost second phase here. Okay, here we go. Now this is going to be very difficult, I can just tell already. Oh my god, that was- Ugh, Get away! Okay... About 5,000 more health. Okay, hold on. Never mind. Wait, this was- Okay, I kinda... Overestimated Plantera. I honestly thought it was going to be much harder. Well, that's done and taken care of. So, our next goal is to defeat Golem. Okay, made it to the boss room and oh my god, what is this boss room? I've never seen anything like this before. This is so narrow, oh my god. Well, only one way to find out if this arena size will affect me. Let's begin. Yeah, this is nearly impossible to dodge the fists. Okay, all the fists are down. Let's wait until I can heal with my potion. And then I'm gonna get right in there. Okay, head is down. Just the body now. Come on, I got this. Whew, okay. That was way tougher than Plantera. I will be using all of the power cells, but I do want to make some turtle armor first. I just need one more turtle shell, and then I can upgrade it into the beetle armor with some beetle husks. Here we go. Got three turtle shells now, and now I need to mine some more chlorophyte because I only have 37. 
Okay, that should be enough chlorophyte ore. Now let's make the turtle helmet, scale mail, and leggings. Then the beetle helmet. And I will be making the beetle shell just for some more armor. And finally, the leggings. Okay, so from 75 defense to 98. But equipping this armor does make me lose out on 4 melee damage. But that's fine. Okay, let's go take care of Golem 5 more times. Okay, and that was the very last one. With that being said, my Copper Short Sword is now at... Level 32. Over 100 melee damage. And now it looks like this. Jesus! Okay, let's head over to the dungeon now to take on the lunatic cultist. Alright, let's begin. And I want to see if I can just fully tank all of lunatic cultist's hits. Okay, it's at 50% health. I think I can, to be honest. Let's just heal up. Yeah, the beetle armor is just so broken. Especially when you get the beetle shell, that gives more defense. Okay, that's all done. Easy peasy. I guess we can start off with the Vortex Pillar first. Okay, Vortex Pillar has been destroyed. Solar Pillar is done. Now for the Stardust Pillar, even though I destroyed the barrier already, I'm not gonna kill the pillar just yet. The reason why is because the Star Cells are really good monsters for gaining experience since they can split apart and grow to their original form, so it's basically an endless amount of experience. So I'll keep farming these monsters until I'm satisfied, or until the short sword is long enough to reach Moonlord's body parts. Okay, I think I leveled this thing up more than enough now. This thing is super long. But I still feel like it's not long enough to reach Moonlord's body unless I like dash towards them. But we'll see. But let's check out the level now. It is now at level 48. Yeah, I spent a very long time leveling this thing up. It now has 180 melee damage and 79 critical strike chance. Alright, let's take down this Stardust Pillar now. One more to go. And the last pillar has been destroyed. Let's go get ready for Moonlord. There we go. Is it long enough to reach? Yeah, it is. Perfect. Oh, but not when it does that. Come on. Okay, gotta focus the middle eye first. Teleport. Oh, that was bad. This time out a bit. Okay, let's do this properly now. Teleports. Perfect. Okay, so far so good. Middle eye is almost done. Come on, kill it. Perfect. The laser got cancelled. And that hand is done as well. Same with this one. Okay, just the core now. Ten more seconds until I can heal. Ooh, that was not good. Oh my god, run. Just run. Okay, I healed. I should 
be good now. I don't want to jinx it. Come on. 5,000 more health. And you're finished. There we go. Final boss, Moon Lord, has been defeated. All right, that's going to be it, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, huge shout out to KenFlesh for creating this mod. I'll leave all the mods I've used in the description below if you guys want to try it out for yourselves. If you've enjoyed watching, don't forget to leave a like, comment if you have any other mod or video ideas you want me to try out, and of course, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Peace.